Hello guys, it is Gative Theories here and today we are back looking at the giant Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU and if you're a fan of the MCU or if you're just a casual viewer I bet you you have seen lots and lots of these movies especially the Avengers movies or one of your favorite Avengers movie series because there's just loads of stuff in this Marvel Cinematic Universe not only are there comics but there's books there's the movies the TV shows uh, there's like shorts there's lots and lots of stuff and it can be hard to work out which order should I watch these in, which order should I read these in, which order should I look at all of these things in so that you get the best full experience and you're updated with everything that you need to know before you arrive to it. And that can become quite a hard thing to try and do. Most people when they're watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you're starting from the beginning, you might start from Iron Man and go from release date order because then that's what you're used to. But some people do try and put it into a big chronological order and just putting the first 23 movies into a chronological order can be quite hard. But what if we took it an even bigger step further? What if we tried to make the whole extended chronological timeline? And by that I mean add all of not only just the movies but all of the TV shows as well. All of the spin-off TV shows that have been around for a few years now and see whether we can put them into a similar order and then finally create a huge MCU extended chronological timeline so that if you wanted to watch the entire of the MCU in order you could buy this list. This isn't going to include any of the comics or the books or the video games or anything like that. Instead, it's just going to focus on the TV shows and the movies and we're going to see if we can put them in some sort of order. So, let's get on with it, but before we go any further, please make sure that you've clicked that red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on. So, to begin with, let's kick it off with Phase 1, and the first film we are going to watch is, I bet you can all guess it, Captain, no, it's not. It's not actually. Instead, it is The Eternals, the brand new film that is going to be coming out in Phase 4. Now, we're not really sure where this takes place in the whole MCU timeline, because I am going to be adding, like, the movies that we've heard of and we know are coming, we just don't know where they're fitting in. So this is a rough estimate, and there have been reports from Kevin Feige that The Eternals is meant to take place across 7,000 years. It's going to span 7,000 years throughout the movie. So it may take place throughout all of the MCU, who knows. However, a portion of the film will definitely show the Eternals being created thousands of years before everything else. So, once the Eternals comes out, you'd watch the first part of the Eternals or wherever they show uh, them being created, and that's what would go first. Next, we have Captain America the First Avenger. Of course, he is the First Avenger, and this will take place between 1943 and 1945. Then, we have the Agent Carter TV series, Season 1 and Season 2, because, of course, that follows Agent Carter from Captain America the First Avenger. Then, there's an Agent Carter one-shot found in the Iron Man 3 DVD, again, further showing more of Agent Carter. Then we reach to 1995 where we get Captain Marvel and we first get introduced to Nick Fury and Agent Coulson and of course Captain Marvel herself. Then we'll skip a few years and we'll go straight to 2010 where we watch the first Iron Man film and then straight away after Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk and then a one shot called The Consultant which is found on the Thor DVD as well as a funny thing that happened on the way to Thor's Hammer which is another one shot found on the Captain America First Avenger DVD basically all setting up little hints at the next movie which also takes place in 2011 Thor so now we've basically gone through most of the movies in phase one and we've got introduced to the main Avengers because of course in Thor you got introduced to Hawkeye as well and in Iron Man 2 you've got introduced to Black Widow so the next thing we watch is Avengers Assemble which of course takes place in 2012 the Battle of New York everyone knows it there's also a mini called item 47 which is a one shot found on the Avengers Assemble DVD as well if you want to watch Watch that afterwards. Then it may seem like the end of phase one, however there is something that goes straight after this, kind of and technically it does. That is a new Loki Disney Plus spin-off series. Now this Loki series actually takes place in the alternative reality created by the Avengers in Avengers Endgame. When Iron Man and Ant-Man try to get the Tesseract in 2012, Loki ends up stealing it and teleporting away. We all remember that scene? The series will show what Loki does in this new alternative timeline. So it doesn't take place in the main universe, but in this new universe that it's created, it takes place after Avengers Assemble. So it kind of goes after Avengers Assemble, 
but at the same time it's in a completely other different universe, it, it begins to get a bit complicated. Now let's move on to phase two. We start off with Iron Man 3, as you normally would in 2012, then All Hail the King, which is a one-shot from Thor The Dark World. Then this is where it gets complicated because we finally started adding Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now because in Avengers Assemble, Phil Coulson, who's the main character in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., has been killed by Loki. So now he's coming back. And this is where it gets complicated because we have to be able to, if you're a fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you'll definitely know this, the end of Season 1 ends during Captain America Winter Soldier. The whole point of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is to show what S.H.I.E.L.D. was doing when S.H.I.E.L.D. sort of got like destroyed in the universe. But it basically shows sort of like a behind the scenes of Captain America the Winter Soldier of like what was happening to the actual S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and not just Captain America and everyone else. So what we have to try and do during this phase is make sure that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1 fits up uh, with Phase 2 so that it all works together. So you then watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 1 Episodes 1 to 7 then Thor The Dark World, which takes place in 2013. Now that we've been introduced to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. team, you then watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 1, Episode 8 to 16, and that sort of takes you just to the beginning of S.H.I.E.L.D. sort of being taken over by Hydra, because this is the moment where Sky will find out that Ward is Hydra, and lots of things are about to start happening with Hydra taking over everything. And then you get to Captain America the Winter Soldier, of course the big moment in the middle of the MCU where S.H.I.E.L.D., the thing that we know has been around for ages, has protected the Earth, has brought the Avengers together, has now been disrupted and destroyed because Hydra has infiltrated it. Then you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 1, Episode 17 to 22, which basically shows how the Agents dealt with the fact that S.H.I.E.L.D. is now breaking apart and Hydra is infiltrating it. So it all fits up. So technically, that last part goes, like, inside Captain America the Winter Soldier, but too complicated to work out. It's probably just easier to just watch Captain America the Winter Soldier and then the rest of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Then we get Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1 and Volume 2, which both take place in 2014 because... They just go straight next to each other. Then we get a new TV show, Daredevil, Season 1. And then we're back with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 1 to Episode 19. And then Avengers Age of Ultron, which takes place in 2015. And then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 2, Episode 20 to 22, because at the end of that they mention Ultron and what the Avengers are doing. Then we get Ant-Man in 2015, then the brand new TV show Jessica Jones Season 1, then Daredevil Season 2, then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3 Episode 1 to Episode 19. That's Phase 2 over, now let's move on to Phase 3. To kick off Phase 3 we start with Captain America Civil War which takes place in 2016. Then we move on to something new that we would have found out by now, but unfortunately because of the pandemic, we haven't found out about it. And that is the brand new, highly anticipated Black Widow movie. Now we're not sure where exactly this fits in the timeline, but it definitely fits between Civil War and Infinity War. It's basically all going to be about what Natasha did during that time. So halfway through, we might find out her dyeing her hair blonde, okay? So for now, I'm just going to put the new Black Widow movie that's about to come out in phase four, straight after Captain America Civil War, but it will go between somewhere, Civil War and Infinity War, not sure exactly where. Then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 3, Episode 20 to 22. Then Luke Cage Series 1. Then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 4, Episode 1 to Episode 8. Then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot, which was a mini web series mainly focusing around the character of Yo-Yo. And then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 4, Episode 9 to Episode 22, so that we finished off four seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Then we sort of just get clustered with lots and lots of TV shows and movies, and it all just goes in. So prepare yourselves to watch it in chronological order. It goes Iron Fist Series 1, The Defenders Series 1, Spider-Man Homecoming taking place in 2016, Doctor Strange taking place half of it in 2016, half of it in 2017. Then The Punisher Series 1, Runaways Series 1, Black Panther taking place in 2017. Now, this is where things begin to get a bit more complicated, because we get Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 5, and if you've watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Series 5, it changes things slightly. So what they do in Series 5, spoilers by the way, but I mean, this entire video is full of spoilers, so I'm sure you've all seen it. What happens in Series 5 is they go to the future through a monolith, and end up in a distant future, around like a hundred or so years in the future from the present day, and basically the world has been destroyed, and all the humans are being run by the Kree. 
However, what they end up doing is they end up going back in time through the monolith and reversing any of that stuff happening. So they saw it happen in the future and then come back in time and then none of that happened. However, as we know from Avengers Endgame, that sort of changes the timeline slightly because we know that time travel isn't just some sort of fixed place. Basically, if you go back or forward in time and change something, you just create an alternative reality to what was happening. The world doesn't get destroyed in 2017 or 2018 by Quake quaking the world apart. It just doesn't happen. The future isn't run by the Kree. So clearly something's not sort of right. So my personal theory to fix this is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after season five, when they return, they enter a new alternative timeline, like sort of like a multiverse, a different universe. So they're not really in the main MCU. It's really kind of complicated. And if you want to find out more about that, which I highly recommend you should, if you don't understand what I've just said, I've made a full video on it and you can go and click the card up there or there will be a link in the description down below just so that you can understand everything that I've just said because I said that pretty quickly. So now we watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season five, episodes one to episode 19, then Cloak and Dagger series one, then Jessica Jones series two, Inhuman series one, then Luke Cage series two, then Iron Fist series two, Daredevil series three, Runaway series two, The Punisher series two, Cloak and Dagger series two. Just basically lots and lots of TV shows before we get to any sort of main movie. Now we're coming to the end of phase three, where of course the big Infinity War Thanos thing is all going to happen. And to start off with, we have Thor Ragnarok and Ant-Man and the Wasp taking place around the same time, just Thor happening in space and Ant-Man and the Wasp happening on Earth, both taking place in 2017. Then you watch Avengers Infinity War because of course the end of Thor Ragnarok literally ties straight into the beginning of that film and you need to watch all the way up to around the time where Thanos is about to attack Wakanda. Maybe around the time where like Thor comes down to Wakanda and is about to attack Thanos around that time and then you need to stop and pause it and go and watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 20 to 22, because in those exact episodes, they mention that Thanos has just arrived at Wakanda and is attacking the Avengers. So basically, Episodes 20 to 22 of Season 5 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is happening in another place on Earth while the Avengers are all being attacked in Wakanda, so it's sort of happening around the same time. Then you would watch the rest of Avengers Infinity War and then Ant-Man and the Wasp end credits scene, because of course in the end credits scene, Hope and everyone else ends up being snapped away in front of Scott while he's stuck in the quantum realm. Then we get Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now I guess this goes around 2020. We're not really sure where this is going to take place just because it hasn't came out yet. However, there has been leaked videos from the sets when filming. One especially shows the year 2020 on the left hand side. This could just be any random number or it could be hinting at the year when this film is set. It would also be quite interesting if it was set in 2020, as we don't really know how the blip, you know, the five year gap was like, as Endgame didn't really give that much information into it, apart from that it was very, very, very depressing. And then during the blip again, we get Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season six and season seven, as they basically go straight after one another. However, again, this supports the idea of maybe this isn't in the same universe. Again, link to that video is down below in the description if you want more information on that. Because we heard about Thanos in Season 5, like I said before, and then now we've got Season 6, which is taking place during the blip, and yet none of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. team is like, been snapped away. Like, everyone's still there. At least some of them should have gone. But no, everyone is still fine. And they don't even mention Thanos whatsoever or the snap, which just seems really wrong. But either way, even if it is in the same universe, it takes place right here. And then we have Avengers Endgame, which of course takes place in 2023, the end of it. Tony Stark snaps his fingers and we get Spider-Man Far From Home. Next, we move on to phase four. And the first one we're going to watch is Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the new Disney Plus show that is going to look at Falcon and the Winter Soldier becoming the new Captain America, taking on the mantle. And it's set sometime after Endgame. Not sure where, probably like only a month, a few months, a year, sometime around that straight after Endgame. 
then you would watch the Eternals and you'd watch bits of it again. We're not really sure where this film takes place because it takes place over like a 7,000 year span. And according to Kevin Feige, most of the Eternals will take place after the events of Avengers Endgame. So we've placed it here. Then the Hawkeye Disney Plus series, which will take place sometime after Avengers Endgame. Then we get the WandaVision series. Now this is set in the 1950s. However, this most likely isn't time travel. Instead, it's more like an illusion or some form of reality surrounding Wanda and Vision. And this can easily be seen by the teaser when they're apparently back in time, yet then they appear in a grey area showing the world there isn't real. It basically just shows that everything they're thinking of is just an illusion. Then we get the Loki series. We've already spoken about it. It will most likely end and will relate to the main universe around this time as it has to tie in with the next movie, which would be Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, we're not sure when this is set, but it is definitely well after Endgame and after WandaVision and Loki, because the events of WandaVision and the Loki series are going to play, apparently, key roles in this new film. Then we get a bunch of other... Uh, Disney Plus shows and movies which we're not really sure where they take place all we really know is that they're going to take place after Avengers Endgame so you get the Blade film Miss Marvel Disney Plus show Moon Knight Disney Plus show and She-Hulk and I'm going to say She-Hulk takes place before Thor Love and Thunder just because I reckon Bruce Banner will probably appear in She-Hulk and Mark Ruffalo is set to appear in Thor 4 so it's most likely that She-Hulk will take place before that. And then of course afterwards we get Thor Love and Thunder again not really sure where that's set. Then we get Phase 5. We know that Black Panther 2 will be the first film in Phase 5 and it will probably be the next film in this chronological order. So Black Panther 2, then Ant-Man and the Wasp 3, Captain Marvel 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Not really sure where any of those last three films go but they take place in Phase 5 so they probably take place way after Black Panther. And that is the full MCU extended chronological timeline with the movies and the TV shows and it is a lot like there is so much i thought just the 23 movies was a lot but clearly there is so so much i'd actually really love to take give this a try i've of course seen all the movies in chronological order i'm sure you guys have but i would highly recommend trying to give this a go and trying to watch every single little detail and see whether one thing relates to another and it's going to be complicated, but I'm sure we could all do it. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We also have another video called The 50 Ways You Can Watch the MCU Timeline, which includes basically this extended timeline as well, but like loads and loads of different versions of the way of watching the MCU because there are so many ways you can watch this MCU. That It's mad. If you want to check that out, please make sure that you check the description or there'll be a card to go and click right now. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, we've been here in Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.